Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Rebecca from Kangaroo Ridge Retreat. And I'm Hannah from Watts River Brewing and we are Wednesday winos. And I just wanted to say a big shout out to last week with Scott where we had the IPAs and comparison for, so um, thank you. But today we have two um, amazing guests for Wednesday Winos, Damien and Morgan from uh, from Pimpernel Vineyards for a sneak peek of the 2017 GSM. So while we wait for people to come online and let us know in the comments what you are drinking and where you are located, so so that we can we can actually get started. Hi Scott, we can see you. And while um, we're getting ready uh, and talking, feel free to put questions in the comments and we'll uh, raise them with Morgan and Damien. All right. So we're pretty excited about the wine that we're drinking tonight. It is the 2017 GSM and it's just about to be released. So there were some really lucky people who got to pick it up from the cellar door and actually try it. It's actually pre-released at the moment, so I'm very excited. I wanted to say about Pimpernel Vineyards, it's a little hidden secret of the Yarra Valley where they, um, it's tucked away, blink, you'll miss it, but it is really loved locally because the wines are sensational. And yeah, so right now I would like to welcome uh, Damien and Morgan from Pimpernel Vineyards. Hang on. Should be able to see you. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you going? Hi, Becky. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Beck. Hi. Thanks for coming. So, Damien, tell us a bit about yourself. <laughs> uh, hi. Yeah. So, um, I'm Damien. I'm the uh, winemaker for Pimpernel Vineyards. Um, uh, I've been there since 2008, um, so a little while now. Um, and um, tonight we're going to be trying the uh, 17... GSM from um, from the from the estate. Oh. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Beck. How are you going? Hi. Your microphone's working. <laughs> Yay. Um, sorry, I can't quite hear Damien or, or I can just see you. Uh, we can see you. We can see Damien. Uh, I can see Hannah. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. Um, sorry. So I'm Morgan, I work at Pimpernel Vineyards. Um, I'm Damien's boss. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I usually introduce boss. myself at Cellar Door. Uh, no, I do a bit of everything, run the Cellar Door, um, help out during vintage and, and in, the, um, in the wine production process, but also do the membership and, um, yeah, a few other things at Pimpernel. Awesome. So I guess um, shall we all cheers and let's get going and start yeah. off. Cheers. Right, cheers. cheers. Smells amazing. I just get stuck into it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Beck, would yeah. you like me to talk about the wine? <laughs> okay. Um, so the the um the GSM is um uh, uh is a um. A blend of three different varietals here. We've got Grenache, Shiraz, and Mavedre in the blend. And we put a, just a tiny touch of Musket of Alexandria into this wine. Um, this wine is coming from dry grown vines off the estate. So all our vineyard is uh, non irrigated. Um, we don't water our vines. So it's really quite low yielding. Um, yeah, and it's a really interesting blend. It's a blend that is um, is uh, a bit very rare to the Arrow Valley. Definitely delicious. Is it a blend that happens a lot worldwide? Yeah, well, look, it, it takes its origins from the um, from Southern Rome. Um, so it's um, yeah, it, and quite famous within that that area there. Um, so it's a, a well, yeah, very much a well-respected blend as well. It, and it will vary in its components, obviously, from vineyard to vineyard, um, estate to estate in its, in its, um, in its uh, 
uh, the blending material as to the components, the percentages. Yeah. Um, so within that area, it's like we, we adjust the percentages um, each, individual, each individual year to what we think is kind of right for us and what we like and what we want to kind of draw out of the wine. Um, and it naturally adjusts itself on the vine too with the amount of volume we get. Going. So I've got a question. Yeah. From Scotty. Can, blend or co-ferment? Yeah, okay. So um, these uh, individual parcels, so the Shiraz, for instance, it, it can come in anywhere up to like like this vintage, it came in about around uh, four months, uh, sorry, four weeks ago. So um, so we picked the Shiraz component four weeks ago and then we picked the GSM, uh, the Grenache component um, over a, um, we did multiple picks on it and it was it was picked a lot later. So, and then the Mavedre came in last. So it was uh, the last component to come in a month after the Shiraz. So it's, it's fermented separately. We do all small batch fermentation with our wine. So we're fermenting around 800 kilos at a time, which is equates around two to two and a half barrels at a time. Um, and then blending back to, to um, finalise the blend. Um, uh, the, uh, there were six individual ferments with this particular wine um, to, to make this wine, yeah. It has a very, I don't know, musky, musk, like musk nose? Yeah. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of the name before. Then when you said the musket, then I'm like, oh, yeah, musk. Is that? Mustics, mustics is something that we often get within within the wine here. Um, we also get, you know, a lot of kind of like big big hits of kind of red uh, red fruit flavours, so like um, raspberry kicks through the palate from the ash. And the uh, Mavedre brings some meatiness to it. With the Shiraz, I tend to kind of like that to just stay in the background a bit, not be too visible. So I like to blend it as such so we're seeing the Grenache component and the Mavedre really shine through and, and come to the fore. Um, what about passion fruit? I don't know if I'm tasting passion fruit. Yeah. Okay. I so really it's an interesting comment because... Early on with the um, with the Mavedre barrels, sometimes we can see this this kind of cool climate passion fruit character from a red wine that is, you know, these, these varietals they're they're quite marginal in the era, so they're really late ripening. Um, uh, we're kind of we're one of the pioneers of this blend, so sometimes the, with the Mavedre they can really offer this kind of um, this real cool climate character and. Often we will see a slight hint of passion fruit within that particular varietal, which is a bit bizarre for a red red wine. Yeah, that's why I was uncertain. So, Morgan, what um, with your in the cellar door? How do you find that the GSM goes when because it's not a lot of people don't know it from Kangaroo Ridge Retreat. Um, I found that it was. Difficult, not difficult to sell, but actually to entice people to actually try it because it's an amazing wine. What do you find? I mean, it, people can try it before they buy it, but, you know, what's the response? Sure. Um, I guess it's one of the older blends in Australia. There's plantings back to the 1800s in, in Barossa in South Australia. Uh, so people, some people in Australia who know wine, I guess they, they're aware of this blend, but it's really unusual to see it in the Yarra Valley or in a cooler climate region, usually Barossa and McLarenville are really quite warm, arid areas. So um, people are quite intrigued uh, by this blend. Um, and we, I guess at Pimpinel we talk a lot about the old world and France where we're inspired by, um, and it's a classic Southern Rhone blend. And so really I describe it in those terms, um, really fruit forward, lovely bright acidity, and it, it really works well in the Yarra Valley with you know increasingly warmer seasons and the effects of climate change. These, these varietals do really, really... Um, quite well in, in warmer environments. So yeah, I've got a comment, a taste comment from a from a person on from Murray. This is, uh, could mostly get a red red fruit red fruit feel, but well balanced. Thanks, Murray. How much oak? Yes. 
he's okay. involved. Um, so here with this particular wine, we, we like to, I've kind of slowly introduced um, the majority of the wine sees really quite neutral oak, so barrels that are, um, uh, you know, six plus, 10, 10, 10 years plus old, so quite neutral. But I've slowly introduced just a little bit more um, really kind of tight grain, fairly uh, what I'd like to call strict oak. So it it does it imparts its characters on the wine extremely slowly. Um, so I'm using them as being second and third fill. So they might have seen, say, um, um, uh, two, two vintages before we introduce them to uh, this blend. So I just want a hint of oak there. Just a little feel of oak through the palate. Um, what you will notice about this wine is that really fine tannin drive through the wine, and um, that that really is quite typical um, from what we've seen of um, Grenache and Mavedre giving you that lovely, really fine, powdery tannin feel through the wine. Yeah. Another question. This from Scott again. Bring it up. Are you finding the style is changing from harvest to harvest with global warming and a higher heat degree day to day in the valley? Um, well, with, with I suppose, um, Morgan, yeah. Sorry, I can't hear if Damien's answering this. Um, Becky, tell Morgan to have a go because he can't hear oh, us. <laughs> Morgan? Sorry? Go oh. ahead, Morgan. Sorry. Um, I guess 2017 was a, a cooler than average vintage. I mean, it was it was warmer than average in a sense, but we had really um, quite persistent weather. Um, no, re nothing really over 35 degrees for much of that kind of January, February temperature, and then really lovely Indian summer conditions uh, through March, April. So 17 is kind of a, a different style, but prior to that, I think 16 was a warmer warmer vintage. Um, 15 was more like this, and I guess. Damien, you might want to jump in here. 2014, was that the first iteration of GSM or was it 2013? Uh, oh. uh, we did one and we actually did a GSM in 2012 was the first one. Um, yeah, was the first vintage as such. But what we are finding is this is our climate change hedge in a way. Uh, right. planet. Um, so this was a little plan to um, uh, with... Uh, the warming seasons to, to see what we could do, and um, um, and but within that, the interesting things for me is that I, I'm finding personally that the ones that I like are the more they're kind of almost like uh, what I would the vintages were like when I first was working in the industry, and with the, the more what I call the more normal vintages as such. So. In a kind of in a in a cool climate Yarra Valley uh, way, I'm I'm really in, really enjoying the wines that are being made off off uh, this particular area of the uh, the estate. Um, uh, this year they're showing really quite peppery characters. This was a really cool vintage that we've just had, but I'm quite excited about the um, character that we're pulling off the block. It's um, it's um, quite quite an interesting sight. Um, we've got, um, I'm always getting asked about smoke taint. Is there any issue with smoke taint? Because oh. the air quality was shocking during the... Is this vintage this just gone? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no. No, there wasn't. Um, basically, we had, to, was a, this was such a testing vintage that we've just gone through. It was a really hard vintage, um. In more ways than one. Early on, we had problems with smoke, um, being in the valley, but those fires were coming from a really long distance. Um, we're really lucky in the Yarra. We're one of the, I, I would say, as far as regions go in the Yarra, uh, in in Australia, where the Yarra has been extremely lucky this year. Uh, with those fires coming from really quite far away, um, that smoke had um, dissipated all those um, uh, nasty ingredients that could affect the wine, uh, the grapes that were hanging on our vines. So we've actually escaped any um, smoke taint um, this year. There has been no kind of detrimental effects 
from what I know personally, um, within our our um, vineyard and winery. Yeah. I see an interesting comment there from um, uh, from Scott. No, I'm not a climate change denier at all. <laughs> I don't want to scan off there. I, I completely believe in climate change um, and um, hence the reason why we planted these varietals right, right to begin with. And uh, I just think they do look um, – they're actually probably a little bit more easy to ripen than what I thought they possibly would have been. Mm. I'll pull up the comments so you can see it. It's from Scott. Um, he's got fabulous wine, savory, fine tannins, beautiful red fruit characters, and lovely herbal complexities. Now it smells amazing now and tastes amazing. Uh, should we have waited to drink it, or is it? It's an hour or a later drink. Um, for me, for me personally, I think. This one's got a bit of both ways about it. So um, it's got lots of abundance of fruit flavour now. So it's kind of fruit forward and drinking really nicely now. Um, but will definitely um, change with time um, um, over the, over, I would say over the kind of medium term, um, over around an eight-year period, it should be fairly, fairly decent drinking. I'm usually quite conservative in these areas, so... Um, um, I think it'll improve with time. Put on a little bit of body weight. It's still quite kind of closed and a bit restricted. And um, I think that fruit will really um, shine through um, with a little bit more age on it. Okay, got another question. Tough one from Scott again. Can you remember the numbers? <laughs> yeah. Numbers, pH, all the et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Is it on label, like beer? No, it's... Look, I know, I know a lot of people focus in these areas as such. The bone maze through each individual varietal um, change quite a lot. Usually what I'm looking for within the Shiraz is a, an earlier pick, a, um, a, 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 a lower bone within there to give me some restraint in the Shiraz. I don't want the, the Shiraz to be kind of like big and heavy and bold. I want it to be a little bit more restrained, a little bit more fresh. So I pick it earlier for the GSM. Um, and then with the with the Grenache and the Mavedre, they are a lot different in the vineyard. They control me a lot more than what I control them, which means that um, they're, as I mentioned before, they're quite marginal. So um, they only just kind of ripen in the era. So I've got less control over them um, and sometimes I need to, it's more about weather. When, it, when it, um, if I'm seeing rain coming, and I think flavour's right, and and generally speaking, that's what I generally pick on is flavour. So the fruit character, what I'll do is I'll take a random sample off the vineyard, squeeze it out. If the fruit flavour is right, um, then then I'll pick. Um, Bome doesn't matter to me as such. TA doesn't matter to me. pH doesn't matter to me. It's all about the flavour of that fruit juice when it's coming in. Um, in saying that, you know, it generally, it's fully ripe. You can see that the alcohol is around 14.3. So it, it's fully ripe in its nature. Um, pH is quite, quite low for, um, for a, uh, a, a, a Rhone red wine. It's usually around 3.3 or so. Um, yeah, TA, I'm, I'm, I'm sure on the TA, I, I haven't measured it on this particular wine ever. So there you go. <laughs> Next question. Next one. Um, it's more about, it's from, it's actually from Barry. Hi, Barry. Good to see you. Um, what's the background to the GSM mix? Is it a European standard? No, no there's no real, I, I wouldn't say there's a standard there as such. Um, when, you, when you're seeing GSM on the bottle as such within Australia, then it has to have the majority of the blend has to be Grenache, Base. So here it's 48% Grenache, it's 29% of the Shiraz and 22% of the Mervedre with 1% or so of Musket of Alexandria. So um, the Musket grape co-fermented in. Um, yeah. So Morgan, 
there's another question. Yep. I guess we've just opened straight up to question and answers um, section here. Uh, Katie wants to know what what's your favourite meal to have with this bottle um, with this with the GSM food matching? What is it? Oh, um, lamb ragu, uh, rich, rich, hearty winter dishes are really good. So slow cooked meats, um, anything that's rich and fatty, the acidity of the Grenache really helps cut through that. Um, and yeah, tomato flavors, um, those kind of proteins, red meats work really well. Uh, Becky, are you out? <laughs> Simon just stole half of my bottle. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, I am out. Oh, I've got one to myself, so I'm all right. <laughs> but I will break into the 2015 because we have 2015 stock and I'll be a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I really... Oh, I reckon you could just drink this by the fireside. It's very delicious on its own. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, do we have any other further questions from the from our... Yours. I want to say hi to, while we're seeing if they have any more questions, George from Driven Indulgence, one of our regular visitors to um, the brewery. He's popped in. I'm sure he visits Pimpernel as well. So. I have to pick up guests from Kangaroo Ridge Retreat too. He navigates our driveway. Hey, George, you know, our driveway is really looking good right now. We've done a lot of work on there. <laughs> There needs to be a big connection to George. Um, I'd like to say hi to George. Um, I bought my picking crates off George. So, yeah. Hi, George. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, um, Bianca sorry. had a nice steak with her glass tonight and cheese. <laughs> and, Murray, what did you have with yours? So... Um, so tell us, I have to move into this about this. When's it going to be released? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and how they get it. Yeah, because this is truly a sneak peek. Uh, it'll probably be released uh, within the next week or two, possibly two to a month. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just, we're just working on our website at the moment, trying to get this one to our membership. Uh, they get priority access obviously other than you guys. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll open it up to the general public after that. So if, um, will there be an announcement or do we want to join up as a member? Or what, how, if you really, really, really want to try it, how can you get your hands on it? Yeah, go to Pimpernel Vineyard's webpage. Um, there you can view our new online shop, which is really easy to navigate, finally. Um, <laughs> You can see the ones there, the GSM uh, or the Grenache Shiraz Mavet, as this one's called now, uh, will be viewable next week, but you won't be able to purchase it for a couple of weeks. We give the members first go. Um, otherwise, once hopefully this is all over, uh, you'll be able to come and see us at the cellar door and we'll be able to give you a tasting and talk you through the wines. Fabulous. Um, I've got one other question. What other favourite wine do you have, Damien, that you guys make at um, I suppose for me, a lot, a lot of the wines there are um, kind of I'm fairly close to. Um, it's usually the stuff that's in quite small quantities and a little bit that we don't make every single year that I'm really kind of, um, I suppose, uh, enjoy. Um, I enjoy all our wine, but some, some are just because there's, so limited amount of it that you're going, oh, and, you know, like, uh, for instance, our, um, our Mazan, um, which isn't made every year, quite rare, um, you know, last vintage 2017, there was only 16, uh, 600 bottles made of that particular wine. It's something that I really quite kind of enjoy and cherish because I know it's not going to be a lot around long. So, um, yeah, usually it disappears pretty quickly. And, yeah, but... Yeah, I'm something I'm very happy with. Um, Morgan, I've got a direct question to you. How do you become a member? <laughs> um, so our membership, we send our members six or 12 bottles each six months, usually in May um, and November. We're currently working on our new website for you to be able to log, log on or be able to sign up to the membership. 
Um, you can email us and we'll, we'll respond and, and sign you up. But with the membership, we give you 10% off a half dozen, 15% uh, off a full dozen. You get free freight. Um, you can mix and match the wines, whatever you'd like. Complimentary tastings, invitations to our wine dinners, which normally we would do each year. Um, more where, than one. Last time? Where, did, where were the, some of the ones that you went to, the wine dinners? Uh, so the last wine dinner we did was um, our Pinot dinner. We did a Pinot launch on the 2017s. So there were five Pinots that we had matched uh, to, mm. to several courses, um, which we had at um, Scott Pickett's restaurant, Matilda, in South Yarra, which wow. was fantastic. Um, we've also done wine dinners at Centenove, uh, just off Collins Street in the city. So we usually do a, a Rhone release or like a heavier red Shiraz GSM release uh, with those guys as well. And they match class, classic French dishes with those wines. Um, so, yeah. Fab. Um, the question and answers are still coming. Sorry. <laughs> um, any news on another Fortified? Uh, uh, yeah, so we, I think Scott must be referring to the Musket Fortified. We, um, we do, uh, we've, we've done one this year, so... Uh, we just finished up into this, uh, this this week, so um, yeah, we we have produced a uh, a fortified this particular season as well. We've we've, we've got a uh, a single barrel. When we do fortified, it's only a very small amount usually, um, and we've moved to a an area where we're um, doing multiple vintage, so we're kind of um, aging our fortified for long periods of time in barrel and 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 blending multiple vintages uh, to kind of add, add complexity to it. So, yeah, that's the that's the news on the Fortified. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so I just want to do a couple of call-outs because um, uh, Barry's asked for, can you, how about some local dinner launches? <laughs> huh. Yeah. Um, we, we were, um, Morgan, do you want to? Uh, yeah, Barry, it's something we're going to be looking at once restaurants reopen, I guess. Um, we were booked yeah, in with we'll uh, Yerin. Definitely try and tee something up in the near future for sure. And I want to call out a couple of the other comments. And I'm sorry, I'm the one that's reading these because I'm the only one who can actually see them. Um, is the picks for other wines at Pimpernel. So the other picks have been the Pinots, one and two. Uh, that was from Barry. Uh, Kerry has said, oh, my God, the Chardonnay. Simon? Grouch. <laughs> Sorry? The grouch gets a mention. Yeah, the grouch from Simon gets a mention. Um, so, yeah. Um, and George really wants to know a little bit more about the food pairings so, um, to m match his dinners. So any other dinners that can go for the GSM? Um, Damien, do you want to have a go at the dinner match? Yeah, look, I've always, like, um, found that any kind of, um, I think just something, I've always said that a simple barbecued lamb chop goes perfectly <laughs> with. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go away. Was that Simon? <laughs> sorry. Um, My dog's bum. Barbecue. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. Meat. I've always found that like a, just a, even just something as simple as a barbecued lamb loin chop is goes fantastic mm. with it. Um, um, anything with a little bit of game, we're pretty lucky. I know you guys are up there, um, Becky, with um, this plentiful kind of uh, venison that uh, um, is available within this area. And if you can get your hands on it, it goes really, really nicely with this wine. Our dear, our dear farm. Yeah. <laughs> what about rissoles? Rissoles. <laughs> what about rissoles? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think you probably want a bigger bowl of Shiraz with that. And uh, back to the wine, I'm sorry, back to the wines that you do, a Solera. I'm not sure. Do you know what? I'm yeah, so it's got sure saying like a Solera style. So what is getting into is uh, with the uh, musket, um, with what we're doing is uh, like a Solera style. Yeah. All right. So um, to, 
because we've got to come to an end, I'm sorry, This is, um, keep it short, we've gone way over time. So really thank you for everyone watching. But always at the end, towards the end of this, we talk about um, fantastic things or things that gave you hope or were one, made you happy this week because we're in such a unique situation at the moment. So um, Morgan, would you like to tell us, share with us something that made you feel happy or you were... Uh, I found a really found a really nice Armagnac that I'd recommend. Oh. This has been um, fantastic. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right. Hold um, it. Hold it still. Looks back to front to me. That's yeah, correct. But I hope it's okay. <laughs> um, that's available at most bottle shops. Um, and it's not too expensive. It's around $50, $60 a bottle. That's been fantastic. Really good to watch um, Lego Masters with that. Been really enjoying <laughs> it. It's been very positive. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were working on the website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got to have some downtime. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damien, um, your highlight. Yeah, I suppose for me, um, uh, we sent our last vat down um, to barrel um, during the week. Uh, so end of vintage. Um, a shout out to um, Daniel and Ben. Daniel's my brother who I work with and Ben is um, uh, he's spent the last two vintages working um, at Pimpernel. Um, yeah, a lot of hard work during the year and a difficult year. Um, yeah, it was quite quite an exciting time, and I think also this rain. You know, it's um, uh, we've kind of forgotten about what Australia was um, faced with um, uh, last summer. Gone with bushfires as such. Um, we're very lucky in this area, and hopefully, a lot more of Australia is getting some of this rain. Um, um, I think it's a really positive now, and hope it can. It can continue so that we um, um, don't have as much fire danger next summer. Yeah. Hannah? Mine was probably looking forward to tasting this wine. Uh, it's definitely Pimpernel's one of my favourite vineyards in the valley and uh, pretty excited to be so lucky to taste it so early. So, yeah. This wine, <laughs> not not alcoholic at all. <laughs> um, yeah, I was pretty excited too. I have to concur with you, Hannah. There. <laughs> um, my 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 good thing this week was there's this um my highlight of this week was there's a blogger or a comedian that's doing that's what I reckon, and he put on there a carbonara. How to make carbonara with that carbonara sauce. Pretty he's funny. Good. I made my first carbonara. No, it, and he's hilarious. So he's making making food and, yeah, making you feel good about it. So I thought, yeah, shout out to him because, yeah, he's pretty funny. So and that's what I reckon. Check him out on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Hannah, do you want to tell us about next week? Yeah, um, so we're probably going to taste our Horse to Water, our collaboration brew with pineapple and Britannomyces with um, Sailor's Grave from Gippsland. So that'll be good. Excellent. I've got a bottle of that, so I'll be able to uh, join in. Awesome. Thanks yeah, so much, Dan. Awesome. Awesome. No worries. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Morgan, for joining us for Wednesday Winos. Mm. See you next Welcome. week for Sailor's Grave and Kate, what, what you were brewing with the uh, host of water. And I'll try and get it up this week so you know where you can actually get pick it up from. So thank you. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yeah.
Sorry, I'm long and I'm trying to get your height. The same thing happened last week. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, coming back up again. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry, it's not coming up. So it, it, it somehow hooks itself. So have a lovely evening, everybody. <laughs>